Hello, Ray Phoenix here. Welcome to Let's Play Ape Escape, Part 7. So this time around, we're going to, but it's quite possibly one of the longest levels in the game with the most. It's the first time I actually get Spectre as a target. It actually says, go capture Spectre. It's actually going to tell us to do that. Yep, go catch Spectre. Suggesting this very well could be the end of the game, but it's not. There's still quite a bit left in this game, so don't worry if you if the fans that think this game's over too soon. This game still has a lot of entertainment, a lot of fun to give us. So we're fighting off these weirdos who came across in the mysterious age a long time ago. And so we're, we're at Spectre's Castle, pretty much in the medieval times. There's some ways, there's a lot, there's a lot of monkeys in this level. There, there's so many monkeys in this level that, you know, you could pretty much go crazy and capture a good chunk of them. Like, look, we just caught that one monkey in the black shades right there, which those monkeys are supposed to be the hardest to capture. But we managed to capture them easy. And so we still got these enemies that we've been seeing since the beginning, just walking around. They really like to reuse enemies a lot in this game. But I guess it makes sense, considering that, you know, they're... Considering that they only have so many enemies and things like in the game. So a lot of PS1 and Zinker now for doing that for reusing the same enemies throughout the game. I think we could stop this monkey from getting into his UFO, so we guess we'll put up less of a fight. Yep, we did it just before he got to his UFO. We caught him. That's good. It's really good. It's a really satisfying experience in this game. If you capture a monkey for the get to their UFO and fire more some bunch of weapons and all sorts of crap at you, then you have to get use a slingshot shooter to shoot them down. So yeah, we caught I think we caught the monkeys that are paying out a rod in those lowland area, so now let's go over to the castle itself. The main feature will be a crumbling castle without a castle, right? <laughs> and look at that, they just left the front door open for us. Like, it's like they just wanted us to come in and, you know, Spectre really didn't want us to come in here and capture his monkeys today. He would have locked that door so then it would have been impossible for us to get in. You know, could he, and then, then he might be very well be the ruler of the world if he if he would let us if he would do that. But no, nope, Spectre is dumb, or, or maybe it was one of his monkeys he had left it up to to do that. And I mean, no, Spectre and monkeys are dumb, which is why they lose. Most bad guys are dumb. That's why they always lose in the end. At least most of the time, that's how it is. You know, that's how it pretty much always is in fiction. All the bad guys always lose. The good guys win. And of course, we're gonna win. We're still picking up the gold triangles. You can see, we can still earn some new lives. And we'll be needing a lot of lives soon because we're gonna be going after some bosses. There's also gonna be a slew of bosses in this last part of the game. Good, I've learned this last part of the game. There were very many bosses in the game already, but now we're gonna be coming after. More bosses. I think the sequels actually are better at, at, at like, um, at our say, like, balancing out the bosses. So it's not like you fight all of them at the end of the game. You actually, like, you know, spaces them out. But this game doesn't really do that. It's, like, just all the bosses are at the end of the game. And, and so, yeah, but that's all right. I mean, most of the bosses in this game are pretty predictable and somewhat easy to take on. The final boss of the game is even the hardest boss in the game. We're actually taking on harder bosses in earlier parts of the game. So we captured that monkey there. Oh, look, the door is activated now because we caught enough monkeys. Now the door there is open. Let's just go refill our health. And I think there's a button you're supposed to... Oh, yeah, there it is. That way those things come down so we can jump up and down or climb up the castle. Which, of course, that would be useless for Spider-Man because Spider-Man just has the ability to stick to the castle walls and just climb up the castle walls. Because he's Spider-Man. What else would he be doing? Spider-Man never uses the stairs. He always has to climb up the side of the building for things like that. And we know back here is some more hidden monkeys back here. They seem to use all the white blue pants monkeys in this level. The monkeys like really running away from us. This one's actually putting more of a fight than most other blue light blue pants monkeys. Oh and look at that. Look who's over there in the far off distance. Yep, you guessed it. It's another Spectre coin. I'm not sure how many Spectre coins are in this level. I kinda of lost count of how many Spectre coins I have. All that matters to me is so we get enough Spectre coins to unlock the best mini game in the entire game. Galaxy Monkey. Galaxy Monkey's an awesome mini game. And, and you know, Galaxy Monkey is an awesome mini It's probably the best ape, um, mini game in the entire series. I actually did make a video of those mini games a very long time ago, but it's back before I did commentary and videos. Before I, I'm back when I would play it on the actual system. I'd film it for my grandma's Quasar TV, my grandma's wood grain Quasar TV. Speaking of TVs, I finally got rid of my JVC Super Command recently. It's, it's one of the TVs I've had for the longest amount of time. It's from 1994, and I used it to make some of my videos a long time ago. You see, I've watched in very, my, if you're watching my very early YouTube videos, the gaming videos, even when, even when, I, when I, some of the earlier ones I did with commentary, I would film my TV play, with, with the system actually connected to it, playing the game from the actual system. It would look like something that could have been made in the 90s or something like that. 
Well, because those games were made in the 90s, and that TV was made in the 90s. I finally got rid of that TV last week, and it was an old TV. The speakers weren't working very well on it anymore, and I told it's on its last legs. So now I got rid of it, so I have a lot of empty room in my place. So I can buy more systems and buy more crap and fit more stuff into my place. Why else would you get rid of something really big? The man might even be able to fit an arcade machine there. I'm still interested in buying an arcade machine, but no, I'm probably moving out soon or sometime like that. So yeah, I don't think it would, it would be. I don't think I could really fit an arcade machine. Or would, would it make sense for me to get an arcade machine now? I suggested earlier on this LP there should be an Ape Escape arcade game. I still think that's a good idea. That's my updated opinion. <laughs> it's always good to get updated opinions, right? I still think it's a good idea. There aren't really very many new arcade games anymore. Mostly because arcades are dying business, a dying industry. So that's why they don't make very much, much more. Things that's why they don't. That's why they don't really like them. I mean, not I mean, even even physical formats are dying out. I found my my some of my Star Wars VHS tapes today from a long time ago. And I was gonna I have I'm gonna watch them maybe later today or so. I have, I have every Star Wars movie that came out on VHS on VHS, which is pretty much the original trilogy and the first two Star Wars prequels. Those all came out on VHS. The Revenge of the Sith was one of the first movies I ever heard of that only got released on DVD because it's 2005 and Blu-ray didn't come out yet. But apparently, Revenge of the Sith did get a, get a get a VHS release. It really came out in like Australia and New Zealand and possibly Europe because those people are kind of slow or kind of backwards at, at adapting to the new technologies, which I can't really blame for that. A lot of people didn't really trust the digital age. When digital technology was coming up, people didn't really trust it. Like cameras, for example. When digital cameras first came up, people didn't really trust digital cameras that much. Because they feared that what if I what if I put my heart and soul into taking some really good pictures and then what if something happens and it gets deleted by accident or something that that can happen with film actually film is actually a lot more vulnerable than than the digital uh, files. I, I trust digital files. I never, I never fear my computer for getting any of my information. Sure, my old, my last computer, my Alienware, that damned Alienware of mine that I really shouldn't have got, it would often forget things. It would often forget data and things like that or lose data for no apparent reason. But this new computer I have, this HP that I have right now, it's, it's actually really good at remembering my stuff, remembering what I did, remembering when I did something or what something was or something like that. It's really good at that kind of stuff overall. And so we defeated that knight in shining armor. I don't really call that a boss. He's really just a big enemy. He always appears in the level if you come here. So let's go through this door now. And there she is guarding something really important. There must be something really important in the yard. Oh, and look, we're like pretty much in the sewer now of the castle. I guess it's like a sewer section or something like that. Where it probably smells like crap and it's, there's, there's monkeys hiding here. It's probably more like a prison, something like that. It makes sense to put a prison where the sewer is, right? Because you know, that's just that's a perfect place to put a prison, actually. This is like in Saudi Arabia or somewhere like that, where they have like the really nicest, ritziest prisons in the world. <laughs> or maybe they just send them to Chris Chan's house. Chris Chan's house is actually worse than a lot of prisons that I've seen. <laughs> they should just send them to Chris Chan's house. It actually would make a really... Just keep them there for a week, and they're never going to be angry at anything again. They're never going to complain about anything again. That actually is a pretty good punishment, actually, come to think of it. That actually should have as a real punishment. They should make houses like Chris Chan's and use them as... You know, prisons kind of thing. <laughs> Doesn't really show how much monkeys that we've collected or how much there are in total game, because right now our only real objective right now is to go catch Spectre. That's why I see Spectre's hat is in the bottom right hand corner of the screen every catch a monkey. And then this part, I almost run out of air a lot in this part. This gadget is really good at keeping us underwater, but still, even then, it's possible we can run out of air. So, we caught the monkey there, as you can see. I think that's, yeah, we caught a lot of monkeys. We're going to capture the majority of the monkeys in this level. It's really easy to capture the bulk of the monkeys. Well, one of the few monkeys that's not possible for us to get right now is that one that said I was on the roof of the castle. It's encased in that thing, it looks like a computer box or something like that. We need, we need a gadget that we'll be getting at the end of the game to get that monkey, so, yeah. So there we got, we got that monkey now, too. There's only really two gadgets in this game that can be used to capture monkeys. The monkey net and the and the underwater, or the water net thing, but that's only for, like, underwater, which most monkeys in this game are not underwater. Yeah, this castle's really elaborate. I wonder if they actually built castles that are, like, that are that elaborate as this in the medieval times, I wonder. I sometimes wonder what, what medieval times is actually like. Are historical records of that time actually accurate to the, to how, it, to how they were in in, you know, in history. Never interesting that level. I find this level off the runs in circles. It's kind of like those looping stages from the Super Mario Brothers game. If you don't know where to go, you're going to be running in a great big 
circle. And the music kind of reflects on that too. The, the music in the song actually sounds like something that could, that could easily be played if you're running in a circle or being chased by someone in a circle or something like that. But they actually did a really good job of music. So again, they're one of the best songs in the game. The guy who did the music just game, Sochi Tarada, he's, he's like a god at making music. He like, really is. He actually did make some of the best music video games could ever seen. You think all these new mega budget games they make today would have really good stellar soundtracks? But apparently, no, they don't have good stellar soundtracks. That's, they're actually quite, you know, like, um, generic sounding or stuff like that. So we see that, we finally hit that switch, and we and now the door is open. We open up that door as on the roof of the castle, so you have to go back to the roof of the castle. But I think there was another monkey hiding here. Oh yeah, look guys, right, there is. Here's another monkey hiding here, and we caught him good. Uh, you know, without him putting up much of a fight, we finally caught him. I wonder what the most troublesome monkey in the entire Ape Escape series is. I don't know, most of them don't seem to be troublesome because they pick up public fights, usually because of where they're hiding. Some of the monkeys in this game could hide in, in very obscure locations that you may never have thought of looking at and of looking for, or, or looking around at. And and the monkeys in this game, like I said, they're, they're really good at hiding. It's been so good at hiding, in fact, it took me several years to figure out where all the monkeys are in this game. That's how elaborate this game is. This game really, you know, there really is a real really big investment of your time and effort and things like that. I mean, nowadays I could play for this game really easy, fast, and easy, because I've played this game a lot before, and I know this game well, I know this game with the back of my hand. This is this is considered to be an easy game to me. That's probably because I play it. It's like Jumping Flash, you know, it's a game I've played so many times over and over again. I've probably played and beat Jumping Flash more times than I've played and beat any other video game ever, and this game might, well, no, I don't think this game would ever rival it soon. There's a lot of games that beat uh, probably more than this, like Mega Man X, uh, Capcom's 1941, that's another one, but again, only, it shouldn't be fair to compare some games together, because some games like 1941 is a game you could play and beat in like 20 minutes, while games like Ape Escape take like at least 7 hours or so. I actually did this in 4 hours, I think, or, or something, I don't know exactly, but it takes several hours. It still takes many hours to get through a game like this. Well, and even for Jumping Flash, you get through that game in an hour and a half easy, to the first original worlds and the extra worlds, but... But, 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 but Capcom's 1941, you get through that game in like 20 minutes. But look, there's some plot. Well, look who's here. So you finally found us. Spectre. Jake. And how is everything coming along? Everything is under control and coming along very nicely according to plan. Very good. Then let's get going. Right. Hold on. You're not going anywhere. Oh, yes, we are. I don't have time to bother with you right now. Oh, but we will. We will meet again. You just wait. You won't even know what hit you. Another time, another place. You'll have your chance. think we're gonna fight Spectre and that thing, but oh no, Spectre just runs away like a whiny coward that he is, and he has left us here to fight this Black Knight, this big Black Knight that has electricity flowing from it for him. He's actually quite slow, but he's actually quite, he pack, he's a lot bigger than us, so he packs a powerful punch against us. He's really, he's, a, he's like a big like major killer, like a robot and he's right he's most likely a robot pretty much all the enemies in this game are robots like in samurai jack or something like that where it's always against robots or mythical creatures things like that that's so they could put an abundance of violence in this game and still get away with an e rating <laughs> so it's running away from from the robot knight as you can see there what's that what's more elaborate about this game too is that each boss i guess you could call this a boss this might be the first true boss in the game each boss has like a different technique for fighting them or technique for beating them. It's not like a jumping flash. Every boss in that game is pretty much just uh, just an overpowered enemy or something that or a highly powered enemy. And look, we're fighting him on Spectre's face. And Spectre's head is like is painted on the is painted on the ground. So there we get a little hit on him each time. Oh look, he actually gave us some health that time. The bosses in this game can be quite nice sometimes because they give you actual health that you can use. <laughs> Just running away from him. he's actually quite he's actually quite fast compared to us actually because it's because there the space cushion seems to be consistent. So there we got every hit. I mean, look at that more health. He keeps wanting to give us health and look at that he's finally dead. I think we're free to go now. So yeah, we are. Yes. 
I love that little jingle. It plays and complete a level. <laughs> so, like usual, we're going to go back to the lab. Natalie's probably going on Discord again. Wait a minute. Natalie's gone. Professor's gone, too. Do you see that? They're gone. I wonder what's happening. Hey, wait a minute. What's going on here? Hey! Listen, I have a message from the professor. Let's hear it. Understood. Spike, I'm sure you've seen the strange things going on outside. While you were gone, Spectre and his gang of apes swept in and have taken over the town. The entire town is running scared. Everything's been turned upside down. It's a mess and we need your help. Here, take a look. Spectre's built his base right in the middle of town. The apes are everywhere. His army is getting stronger and more dangerous. You're the only one who can save us all. You've got the gadgets, now go use them. Time is running out. We're counting on you. Ah, hey, wait a minute, what are you doing? Hold Let on, go of So it looks like Natalie and the Professor got captured by Spectre, and now it looks like it will be sent to the present day, finally, where monkeys are still causing havoc and trouble. This is Ray Phoenix, signing out.